So it turns out I've been thinking about Tamara wrong, and I think most people have. Now, what do I mean when I say this? So this unit has a passive called Sandstorm on her unique class, right? And I think most people view this as this extra thing where it's like you have like a 30, you know, to 40% chance, depending on your decks, sometimes higher, to basically deal, you know, big damage. In some cases, it's either like two times to three times or more damage. It's almost like getting a crit. And if your defense is at like 30 to 40, it's generally like getting a crit. The damage is similar. And it's a different thing, and it can also work with crits. However, I think the thing that everyone has been missing, myself included, is that this is a crit unit. And now that I've said that, I think everyone sees it. <laughs> this is a crit unit. So people, when people run Panette, how do they run her? They see that she gets crit plus 10 when she's missing HP. And they're like, oh, this is a crit unit. She doesn't double, uh, she has high strength. So we can leverage her high strength and her crit plus passive to get her critting and one rounding. However, Tamara is a crit unit that can double because she's fast. So a lot of people typically cite her lower strength, which is in reality, similar to like a hero gold Mary. Uh, like if we look at hero gold Mary, her base strength is 17. Uh, Tamara's base strength at I think a similar level. I think gold Mary is like internal level like 18. So she's only like two more points of strength higher. Uh, they're pretty similar strength. They're similar speed, similar defense. Tamara's slightly faster. Gold Mary's slightly higher strength. They basically do the exact same thing if you want to have them both tank. Uh, but the difference is she has crit plus 30 at all times. And now that I've said that, I, sh I should hear <laughs> the light bulbs going off in people's heads. I should hear them, even though light bulbs usually don't make a sound. All right, so let's say, so what are her best weapons? Typically what I used to run her on uh, were things like this, like Javelin, Fensilor. However, uh, this Brave Lance is also good and does leverage probability uh, for sandstorming and for critting. So this, just this weapon on Erica or Roy typically will get her one rounding off of crit or sandstorm probability. And notice the build she's running only costs 2k SP or 4k SP. So this is a, this is her Erica, her Erica Roy build. Both Erica and Roy fix her damage for just killing most things uh, with just might with like a fence lar plus five, which is relatively cheap to forge compared to other weapons. Uh, but the thing with her on crit Lance, killer Lance, is that she actually well, hey can there. use it almost weightlessly. So if we go buy one, first let's look at the stats. All right, so crit 30, nine weight. Uh, her starting weight, or her starting build is six. She hits seven build after a few level ups, and then eight build, I think at internal, or at uh, picket 13, and then eventually she will hit nine build, but usually she hits like seven, eight build, uh, round seven build as you enter end game, eight build during end game. So this doesn't really weigh her down much, and of course, if you're running an emblem like Sigurd, it will weigh her down zero. And obviously there are crit engravings that increase the crit rate while reducing the weight. So you can make this thing weightless through a variety of means. Uh, so let's, let's refine it. Should have enough to refine it. It's also cheap to refine. It's cheaper than Fensil Art to refine. This is what it costs to plus five it. It's very inexpensive. Five silver, uh, 50 steel uh 150 iron that's not really that bad so let's just get let's just plus four it it also gets plus 10 crit so it gets 40 base crit and then when we engrave it there are different engravings you could run on it i'm gonna go over the math in a second uh you could run marth on it which gives you slight crits uh you could run lin on it which does reduce the damage by three and the weight you could run, if you're feeling dangerous, you could run this on it. <laughs> she could also get away with running Corrin if you're on like Sigurd. Now Corrin does reduce the damage by two, but it increases the crit by 30. So this would get her hitting like near 100% crit rates. Uh, Byleth, if you're on Sigurd, could be a decent option. It's crit plus 10. Uh, Alir is also a good option. Alir is probably the best option long-term because it gives you weight minus one and crit plus 20 and also hit fixes too. So if you want to hit those annoying like sword masters and wolf knights that have high avoid, hmm. let's give it this. All right, so this is like an end game weapon and you could have like Lin on it before that. 
Uh, now with this weapon, let's have her equip it. She probably wants at least like lance power two to three. So let's check it out. All right, so right now she is on Roy. She's 40 physical attack. Most enemies have 20 to 30 defense. Uh, if she crits, she'll be dealing like 30 damage roughly uh, per crit, which will kill most things. Now let's go over some basic math. All right, so this is where things get crazy because this also changes her Ike build because on Ike, if she's running this and she's enemy phasing one range, her crit rate will hit 100% as any crit weapon typically would with Wrath plus a crit engraving. Uh, but before she hits that, she if she's doubling, she'll hit like really high crit rates. And then with the Javelin, uh, you could actually crit engrave this or crit engrave this or crit engrave both. So on Ike, so, all right, so let's go over some some quick little math here. <laughs> but now she has crit plus 30. That's the point, that's the key takeaway. So crit plus 30 matters, and that's that's a seriously good passive, because now with minimal damage fixing, you are killing easier. All right, so let's turn on the monitor, okay. So let's do a few different scenarios. Uh, so let's say you just have like 50 crit rates, you're doubling with a killer lance, and this is just any unit, okay? At least one of these events occurs. So 50-50, so this is most units, right? 75% chance. This is like a Kagetsu doubling with a Killer Axe. This could be Panera, Panera, <laughs> Panera Bread. Tamara doubling with a Killer Lance. Uh, doesn't matter. Uh, so if that's these are your odds to crit. So if neither would kill off of Might, these are their odds to, to convert that into a kill. So now let's add the Sandstorms. So even just at like a lower end, like 25, which is like early middle game, I would say, or like middle game. Look at the odds at low decks. We went from 75 to 85.9. And then as you, let's say you're on Sigurd, you have like easily 30 decks, you're approaching 90%. So just by having low, like a killer lance and doubling, the sandstorms patch your crit rate easily. Now things get crazier. So with a killer lance plus five, with either a Leer or Lucina or Corin, those are the two of those are plus 20 and the other one's plus 30. Let's say it's closer to 60. So let's get rid of, let's just do two events, like 60 and 60. So two 60%, so you're looking at 84. So this is typically uh, what my warrior Kagetsu was sitting at on Ike without Wrath. Now, obviously with Wrath, this can get up to 100, but two 60s. Now compare that to this, two 60s, and then you're at 30 decks. So 92%, so now we're in the 90s. And then right now, I think she's sitting at like 35 decks. Now we're like almost to mid 90s, like we're approaching 95%. So just by having Sandstorm, you drastically improve the probability that you essentially get a crit. And then also occasionally, and this actually does happen a lot if you use this unit a lot, you will get crit Sandstorms that deal ungodly amounts of damage and straight up one shot things. So not only are you crit patching, but you also get this kind of added benefit, this added benefit of this like crit mixing, where you have two mechanics that are rolling for increased damage and they can combine. And it is possible to get her into really high decks too. Uh, I've seen, to, like you can boost her with, you could tonic her, you could give her the dex books. Uh, you could have a Byleth unit give dex plus 10 on a cav. So you could have like a Mage Knight that's on Byleth and that Rally or the Instruct gives dex plus 10. So you can get dex up to like 50, uh, but on average it'll be around 30 to 35. So this is just at 60%, which is generally what you'll be critting uh, enemies with like higher luck. So, and if we go to 70%, it just gets more consistent for everyone involved. So 70% double crits, you're looking at 96% kill rate. And then if you are just uh, doubling at 70%, you're at 91, so it's 5%. So as you get higher up in the crit rates when doubling, it matters less, but against most enemies, your crits on a killer weapon without wrath will basically be around like 50 to 60, generally. So this is a, this is like the worst case scenario against something that's fast. So this is what she would be at at 35 decks uh, with crit rates of 50%, near 90%, and then you can compare that to the 75%, so it's just more consistent. So now that we know that, her low strength doesn't really matter as much because now she's three times in the damage difference she does deal on enemies. And there's there's numerous things that can fix this. Uh, if you run her on Roy, you get 
strength plus six. And then when you engage, you get strength plus eight. And you also get an increase in dex. So Roy is a good build for her. Eric is a good build for her because you get true damage when you attack based on defense. So you can crit right through enemies' defense, especially armors. She can also kill with Erica without any damage fixing outside of Erica. So she can run like speed plus five and the second passive slot is optional. Um, and then on Ike, you get strength plus four and you also get wrath. So here's, here's the interesting thing about like Javelin. Like let's say she has like 25 crit Javelin. And this could be any Ike unit. 25 crit rate on her Javelin from a crit engraving. So you're looking at 43%. Now if you add in Sandstorms, so 25 crit, 25 crit. Look at how can, look at how much more reliable it is just by adding in Sandstorms. You go from 43% crit rate to 76% crit slash Sandstorm probability on enemy phase. So if you had a unit who was relying on crits to one to two range, which there are a lot of Ike builds like Thief Ike, Wolf Knight Ike that rely on those like 20% crits and do have like a 40% chance to crit, uh, you just get more consistency. And as you build up Wrath, let's say you hit like the 55. So here's your crit rate at 55. This is full Wrath, you're at like half health or minus 30 health, whatever. Depends on, most units will be at half health with the Wrath fully on. And then if we add in the extra events, you're looking at 91 versus 80%. So like even just by crit engraving a javelin, the sandstorm just boosts the consistency of rolling crits to 90s. And this is a big deal because like now this damage issue she has, like no other class in the game gives you crit plus 30. And people for some reason just act like that's nothing. Like people treat Panette like she's the second coming of Jesus Christ because she has crit plus 10 passive. But then, some, like, usually people will also write off Tamara, even though she has, like, a crit plus up to, up to like, 50 passive. Usually around 35 to 40 in endgame. On Sigurd, she easily hits, like, 41. So, like, say you're just, like, doubling on Sigurd and you're, like, 41. Here's, here's her chance to convert a Javelin crit on enemy phase. Uh, and then, obviously, if you're on Sigurd and you're running a Killer Lance and you're at, like, 60% crit rate, you're near 95% crit. In a lot of cases, she'll kill off of Might, if you especially if you have like Lance Power 2 to 3. So like Speed plus 5, Lance Power 2 to 3 with the Killer Lance, and you're looking at roughly this chance to kill. Um, and, this, and the hit rate usually isn't an issue because most of the crit engravings also give you hit rate, and her dex is going to be really high, so she's not really missing things. So she usually has more consistency than a lot of units. Uh, just because of that reason. But even at like 50-50, you're still at 90% with Sigurd giving you like 41 dex because he's dex plus 4. Uh, Lin also gives you dex plus 4. So Lin, you wouldn't need speed passives and you could just run like a damage and a tank passive. So if you even needed it, maybe like Lance Power 2 to 3 and then like Gentility or Resolve Plus or whatever tanking or even like Gentility Plus and Resolve Plus. But that was a build I was going to try on her. Uh, the speed, maybe she doesn't, maybe she speed avoid tank at that point, <laughs> she doesn't even need those. Uh, but yeah, so like, this, this is the probability math, she's crit plus 30 passive. So, how does that actually look then? I already demoed it in the previous video, uh, but with this weapon, which is relatively cheap to forge, and then a javelin, you could give the javelin a crit rate, you, you don't have to. It depends on what she's doing. If she's on Roy, the interesting thing about Roy is she can usually kill things with just Binding Blade Might. And then the defense res also scales, the defense from this also scales her Sandstorm damage. So, and you have a little bit of crit on this too. So Binding Blade rolls for like 15, 15 to 20, 20 crits per double sequence. And then you also have uh, Sandstorms and in this case at 30%. And when you engage on Roy, I think she's like plus three or plus four dex, probably plus three. So you have like 30, two 33% chances to crit, sand, like to Sandstorm, and then like two 10 to 20% chances. So even like that is decent. And th that was the idea behind this build actually, was tanking with Resolve Plus. Uh, Roy also gives you defense and res while engaging. So you typically get defense plus eight, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Now there are units that can just one round on Binding Blade, obviously, uh, with like sword power and stuff like this, and maybe even like a Kagetsu with sword power. 
uh, unlike Swordmaster could do this, which would be fun. I was going to try that out. Uh, but she's a crit unit. And I think a lot of people have been viewing Sandstorm incorrectly, myself included. Because like when I was going over the probability, I'm like, why don't we just treat this like it's a crit? Because it functionally is, and you don't need that much more damage to kill when you're critting, right? So if you're like minus 3 to 5 strength compared to your peers, but you have plus 30 crit, if we can't leverage that, then we're stupid. <laughs> and I'm including myself in that, that's, that's why I said we. Like, if we can't leverage this... <laughs> Like, it's so obvious that Killer Lance is, like, one of her best weapons now. Because she's a crit unit. And it's like, why did I not realize this before? Because, I like, even I was thinking, like, oh, I need to hit more times to trigger Sandstorm instead of... And in some cases, I was, like, experimenting with combining crits and Sandstorms. So, like, this Brave Lance is a fun example. So we'll just calculate this and then uh, move on. So let's go back to Monitor. Except I... <laughs> you like this? <laughs> Let me get this up. All right, there it is. All right. So quadding is crazy. So like, let's say you have like 25, 25, 25, 25. All right, so we're gonna do two things. So 68%, so this is off of critting, and then sandstorm, let's say we have 35, 35, 35, 35. So 82 and 68. So now what we'll do is we'll do this. Pretty sure this is correct. If this is wrong, let me know. 82 and 68. All right, so here's her chance to see a single crit or sandstorm off of a low crit and then average sandstorm brave sequence. And obviously if you add in lance power to that, you're probably killing most things off of might anyways, but 94% is pretty reliable. And that weapon I showed is very cheap to forge. It's literally just a brave lance plus one with a lin engraving. And it also one rounds on Erica. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Peace.